welcome to the building of the TLR 8E 3.0. Thank you to Rob for sponsoring this episode on my YouTube channel. Uh, this is his kit. I am going to build it for him. So when I'm done, this is his, of course, but I get to unbox it, build it, and show it to you guys. So the next thing we have on our chores to do is the rear hub and CV assemblies. So exactly like the front, except for it doesn't have the steering component to it, so you don't have to worry about that piece. So we need the knuckle or the steer rear hubs. So there's one there, and here's two. And we need this bag of bolts. Be careful just dumping everything out because you've got little things like the uh, shins and we got, so I just put those aside for now. And then we'll kind of go through these, see what we need. We'll need those, uh, those, and those. So this bag gets opened right here, so it's going to run away at us. It don't work, Matt. It works a lot better because usually stuff doesn't take off on you. And see these. There you go. Right there. And then need some bearings. Alright, so we're pretty good right now. So here's the barrel that they want little black grease on. And all I'll do, I'll just put some in the hole. Oops. There you go. And then will one, hold the pin in, and two, help coat the outside. So it is greasy when you're done, but it'll just how it goes. And then we take it and we slide it into the hole in the end of the CV. And what I usually like to do is have it so I can see through the hole. You can see the little white there. And then I grab my end piece, slip it in here, pick this four hole. So if you round two out, because uh, it will happen over time, you have another set to go to. Um, so you can use these basically twice. And then we take the long set of pins, I think. Nope, not that one. Let's see these short ones. There we go. And we just rotate this around until we get the right spot. It goes through. There we are. Now that pin shouldn't protrude at all. It should just come to the edge. We take one of the big bearings, like so, and they go over top. And that holds that pin in place. Alright, so it holds that pin in place. So you can't come out. That's how that works. So that's one done. We'll do the other one. Barrel, get a little, little black grease or high, high pressure grease is what they call it. And we'll just slide it in. Make sure we can see kind of through it there. I kind of hold things a certain way just because I do it all the time. The same way and it's repeatable. Got that small pin again. There we go. Now you may have to like rock this back and forth to get it to line up, and it does like that. And then the brain goes on. There, and now it's captured, so now we can't worry about that falling apart on us. Next thing we have these hubs. Of course, the bearing is here, it's going to go on the outside. The other bearing goes on the, oh, sorry, on the inside. These ones go on the inside. We can just push that right in there. We should be able to just push them in like that. The other side gets the small bearing. See that's a little bit smaller. And usually it just pushes on ever so nicely. If you need a little help, you can just grab the other one. Just push it on like that. There you go. Well, that's nice and flat. That part's done. Now we need the hexes. There they are here, and they can just slide right over top. And the holes should line up. You should be able to see a hole right through them. See? Ta-da! 
and then this is where the big pins are, go through and they should slide in and they may slide out now they are captured by the tire but when you don't have the tire on you need something to keep those pins from going on the ground and that's the worst thing so what we do is we grab another one of these screws a little bit of Loctite not much, just a little bit <clears throat> holding the two pin end holes so I can keep it flush I'm just going to screw that in just till it touches and you can get usually just a bite in your fingers are good enough and there we go now the pins aren't going to come out I can always check them by pushing on them see if they'll slide they will not so that one's basically done I can put the cap back on and that assembly together we'll do the other one the same way this one's the front this one's the rear and they go right on the diff cases if you have a look here you can see how that goes together now this is looking at the front of the car because we can tell the diff housings here so that's this way so that flat one with the little arches like this goes on the front like so and the one with the tag goes on the back and it goes on like that and that should fit in like so and these guys use longer screws at the back short screws at the front and then the A-arm gets put together, and we can always build that, the outside of it, afters, which we'll do. But we need to put the pin in, and the, the pin goes between those two blocks. So I'm going to get the pins out, they're right here. And they came in two styles of pins. One's for the inside, one's for the outside. The ones with the screws on them, with the screw thread, those are for the outside, right there. TR 44012. The ones without are the inside ones. A big difference there. We also need the four plastic pieces. Again, the rear toe adjustment. We're given zeros and ones, so there's zeros. Doesn't matter which way they go. And the other one should be ones. There we go. So the front one is an up and down adjustment. And they say for the up and down, which is anti-squat, how much the rear is angled up or down. They say put it in the up position, the number one one in the up position. So, again, this is the bottom, so that's going to be up is going to be down for us. I'll flip it around, there we go. So then put the one facing up. There we go. And the other one facing up, like that. And you'll notice that the holes are on the upper side of that piece of plastic. The zeros are right in the middle. So that's an easy way to tell how these are set up. And we'll put the zeros in. doesn't matter which way they go because they are symmetrical. There we go. Ta-da. So we can check the screw size again, we know which one it is, and these ones just go here on the outside, make sure that looks good, good. Even though they're short screws, I'm still going to use the driver, because it doesn't really make a difference whether it's in super tight or not. So I'm going to stop before the end anyway, just to make sure I don't over tighten it.
go. So there's that one done. Make sure they're still facing up, up and up. Perfect, perfect. And I'm going to put the pins in to the A-arms. Now the A-arms have little pieces of plastic stuck on the end from the molding process. We're just going to rip those off. And you can tell that these A-arms, uh, which side they are by the L designation and the R designation. So again, we're talking about looking from the back. So left and right. So what we'll do is we'll put the pins in. And we're going to slide them into their perspective holes on the front mount. It's good to have a nice surface to work on. Now, the other screws are these long screws, and they hold the, the whole case together at the bottom. That's why they're so long. And they do go through nice chamfered holes on this bottom mount, or sorry, back mount. And these should slide in very nicely without having to screw them in most of the way. There we go. Then you'll get to a point where it stops, which is fine. That's helped to allow you to move this in and out. That's fine. And set our arms in place. Find where are you? There we are. As long as we have it like that, all nicely aligned, we're going to run these screws in. And then when you tighten these ones up, they tighten up the case as well. And I'll tighten up the top ones, which we left a little loose. There we go. Little play there, but that's just fine. No shims required. Where the shims are used, these little plastic ones are just littering everywhere. They're on the outside, which is on these different shafts, which have the screws on them. The screw thread. I'll show you what those are in a minute. So, preemptively, we're going to thread one of these nuts onto the end of both of these shafts. Here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're on the right side, identify the right versus left. Again, we're looking from the back of the vehicle. This is the right, that's the left. And on the bridge here, there's the R, and the other one has the L on it. So we're going to make sure we have the right one, the right correct one, or the correct one, I should say. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shaft in from the front of the car. And so you can just put the nut on the end till it stops, because the nylock nut... Um, has that, that nylon in it, and I'll just put it in from the pinion side. Stack up three of the washers, just put it over top. Now I want the thread sticking out just a little bit, so I want to be able to have room to get this in at an angle, and when I twist it back over, I can push it through. Once it's pushed through, it's now secure. Find my other nut. There it is. And I'm going to throw it on my fingers until it starts spinning my hand. And I'll grab some tools and tighten them up. And they're threaded the same way. So when you're tightening one, you tighten the other one as well. So you don't have to like hold the shaft and tighten it. So I'm just going to keep tightening until it kind of stops. There's a shoulder on the shaft. That will, the nut will bump up against, don't over tighten it, and this should still be loose enough where it moves nicely. There we go. Now I'm going to rotate this, rotate this around so we have to make sure to reverse whatever we did. So you see that on the far side, the shims are on the outdrive side. So again, we'll grab the shaft, and this side I'm going to put it towards from the left, on well, my left anyway, because I've got this turned backwards from the last time. 
And we're going to put on our shims. You can put them on all together or one at a time. It's up to you. And leave that sticking out just a little bit. So when I put the left side hub in, I can put it in a bit of an angle. And then rotate it in so that it'll straighten it out. And it one centers that hub and lets me just screw this on. And then we're going to put this on like so, and then we can tighten it up. Again, don't over tighten it, but just go down until it bottoms out. There we go. That should be good. Last thing we need to do is put on the screws, or what's called bump stops. They're on a different bag, of course. Make things more complicated. We need the three millimeter. Now because the torque required, I'm gonna pick up my three millimeter T-wrench. And they go in from the bottom, just in the holes that are provided. Sometimes it's hard to start them. Once you get them started, they should straighten up pretty quick. You might have to help it a couple times to make sure it goes. And there we go. Hard to, hard to see in this light, but... Again, I'll run it all the way down because we can access the screw from the top side of the chassis. The other one, and we'll put the other one in. And the droop screws are really good to just tune the chassis uh, quite finely for um, how much the down travel you want. Uh, they're also called down stops. <clears throat> so if you're on a higher bite traction, uh, sorry, higher traction track, you can make the down stops come out more to limit the travel down uh, gain some steering back you can you can play with them just to help tune the car we'll get them close that'll be good enough we're not going to tune this until after anyway and there's that stuff done Next thing we have is the sway bars, in which we will take these guys apart. Bag apart, I should say. And start putting these together. Each one of these little figure eight dog bone things need a large pivot ball, that's what it's called. And I like to use a hex wrench to help push this on. Kaboom, like that. And then a small one. They're flat on both sides, so it doesn't matter which way they go on. And for this one, I use, like, like to use a pair of pliers, because it's flat. And it just goes click like that. There's one done. Kaboom. All right, so those guys are done. Where these go on the arms, from the top side, these little slots right here. And what we do is we slide this piece in with the big end facing the back of the vehicle. So these go in, in from the top, make sure this flat piece is nice and flat. And then what we're going to do is take these little black screws that look like that, and they should just slide in. We need a little hub, there we go. And we'll find the center. Once they stop turning my fingers, we can put the screwdriver on them, and then run them in. They should go basically flush with the front of the A-arm. So we're just going to go do 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 There we go. That's flush. And we'll do the other side. And making sure that the pieces towards the back of the car, this is the front, this is the back. So that little extra 
grab a piece, you can go that way. And grab another one of these screws. Don't flip it over. <clears throat> Make sure that's flat. Goes in like so and hang on to it like that. Put a screw in. And you, these are usually you can get in finger just a little bit. That was a little tighter than most, so I'll just use my screwdriver and we'll run that in. It's a fine thread, so it takes a minute. There we go. So next we need the actual sway bar. And the way it goes, if you look at it, it's perfectly straight that way. This curves like this. These go into these knuckles or pillow balls. And then there's a hole in the end of the pillow ball. You can see it there, it'll be straight up and down. And the grub screws, the little tiny grub screws go in there. So what I'll do is we will do the grub screws first. And I think we have two of each. Yeah, the silvers goes in the silver pieces. The black goes in the plastic. And these get locked tight because we don't want them coming out. Especially when we're driving because that's, you know, hazardous. Your parts come flying off. Just a little dab. And then what they do is we just get the hole somewhere we can see it. We run in a couple threads just so it starts. That's good enough now. Grab the other silver one. Put it on our screwdriver, handy holding tool while we apply things. And a little more Loctite, just a little bit. And then we find the hole again. There it is. Screw it in. A couple turns. Now this end will go in here. I'm not going to tighten it down yet. And then I'm going to hold it here. It needs to kind of go this way. This one goes in there. So we have those both in place. Make sure we do this on a level surface too, by the way. Makes it much easier. And I like to have the screw holes up. And if you look at the very front, See it's protruding there? I like it almost perfectly flat. So what I'll do is I'll put my finger there, pinch it, and then I know where it goes. Before we adjust those, we're going to put the back pieces in, which are all right here. And these take the little tiny screws. You see there should be a little recess there. Slide one screw in and two screws in. And being so small, we want them done by hand. And they just go there just to hold that bar in place. <clears throat> now there's a grub screw that goes in the middle to actually tension the sway bar, but it doesn't actually do anything other than keep it from rattling around. You don't want it to bind, because if it starts binding, then one side will be all right, sorry about that, the camera decided to shut off on me. So we've got play bar installed. There's a little, always a little bit of play, but there shouldn't be any forward and back play because of these grub screws. They're in nicely when the unit moves. You can see it's just nice and smooth. And we're good to go there. So, thank you for watching and if you like it, please Click the little thumbs up down below, subscribe, share it with a friend, and check my other videos. We'll see you guys later.